You hold the future in your classrooms, and as you know, it's a changing future, one that now more than ever demands imagination and creativity. Hi, I'm Bob Springer, former NASA shuttle astronaut and two-time space shuttle veteran. And like you, I'm very concerned about education and student attitudes. It's hard to succeed if you can't keep a positive outlook. And to me, that means being inspired and being motivated. Keeping your students inspired is a tall order. We at U.S. Space Camp have found that hands-on learning is the key to igniting excitement in the classroom. Now watch how U.S. Space Camp turns its futuristic classroom into a playground for the imagination of students and teachers. Space Camp, Huntsville, Alabama, Monday, 700 hours, 7 a.m. Kids from all across the country have come to spend a whole week learning, doing, working in teams, getting comfortable with each other, and getting prepared for space travel. Hey, I need my first volunteer. Me, me, me. You said I'm second. Could you said Brian, can I please be second? And The idea behind Space Camp is to capture young people's interest and imagination through the lure of astronaut training and space travel. Try and walk around to that. You guys, how do you think that, how easy would it be to walk around in one of these? Not too easy. Not too easy, would it? Indeed, Space Camp impacts attitude towards educational excellence. These astronauts on the moon have a pretty bouncy walk. That's because the moon has only one-sixth the gravity of Earth. Okay, so what we're gonna simulate here is movement on the moon, being able to move on the moon. Okay. On That's Fred, one of the space camp team leaders, showing Stephanie how to walk on the moon, just like many of the Apollo astronauts did. In the one-sixth gravity simulator, her muscles seem to be six times stronger. Okay, now on your return, you're gonna do your favorite move, okay? Whichever one you like best. Fred gives her some pointers on control. How to move her body forward and not just up in the air. Okay, so you get to take your first trip into space. You're aboard a space shuttle, heading home to Earth with a pretty goofy crew. But they are trying to make an important point. When you leave the gravitational field of a planet or a moon, you become buoyant in your state of microgravity, and so does everything else. These astronauts look pretty comfortable in their environment. That's because they're trained for it. In a swimming pool. At space camp, students also use a swimming pool for microgravity training. What you need to do once I coat your lenses, take your mask, look at the water, shake out the excess. Don't rinse everything out of it. Randy is a bad. team leader for a group of older kids attending an advanced space camp program called Space Academy. Trainees have been taught the basics of using scuba gear. Now they'll learn to simulate weightlessness by applying a principle called neutral buoyancy. So hold off right there, I'll be right back. When we talk about neutral buoyancy, we're talking about a state in which you're more or less suspended in the water. You're not negative, so you don't sink. You're not positive, so you don't float. So it should feel like you're weightless and floating in the microgravity of space. Underwater, building big structures is lighter work than it is on land. Thanks to neutral buoyancy, an object that's normally heavy is much easier to move. This 100-pound ball was built specially for neutral buoyancy. It twirls like a toy top. But if it came at you underwater with any speed, you'd be knocked for a loop.
Space Camp's collection of training equipment includes a microgravity simulator for younger kids. All right, what this is going to do is this is going to move you in five of the six directions that you would move in outer space if you were going to take a spacewalk outside the capsule. Okay? Think you can handle this? Piece of cake, right? All right. The 5 Degrees of Freedom Simulator, or 5DF, was used by the Gemini and Apollo astronauts. Gliding on a thin cushion of air, the chair allows trainees to move in five different directions, forward and backward, side to side, roll, pitch, and yaw. It's also going to simulate a combination of moves that you can do. Shaking you up too much? No. <laughs> Having fun? Each trainee gets a chance to try it out. Sometimes astronauts need to travel in space untethered. The Manned Maneuvering Unit, or MMU, gives astronauts more freedom and mobility to perform satellite retrieval and repair, inspections of the orbiter surface, and other activities. The MMU trainer uses the same five degrees of freedom as the 5DF. In the early days of space exploration, astronauts faced an even more difficult problem. How to regain control of a tumbling spacecraft. The multi-axis trainer is patterned after a device used by America's first space flyers, the Mercury astronauts. On this simulator, you simulate what it feels like to go into a tumble spin in space. You'll not get sick, your gravity is centered, and you never spin in the same direction twice. Hold it at your lap. Shavella goes first. Everybody tells her that a tumble spin really isn't so bad once you get used to it. Okay, back to the future. Building big structures in space, like a space station. When you're almost 250 miles up in the air, it really helps if the parts fit together, because you can't go back home for a replacement. Oh, boy. Great, this looks good. Wednesday, 1900 hours, 7 p.m. After a dinner break, the team resumes work. They are building a model of a giant space station with plastic pieces called Ramagons. Give me the solar panels, we'll see how we can mount them. As astronauts, they have to work together or they're not going to get anything done. They know what to do and they're going to not only do their job, but they're going to help the other guy do his job. Everyone has to work together as a team and we hammer that out here. I mean, you've got to be able to work as a team. Guys, we just discovered down here on this end that uh, it's slightly different. we're going to have to take the whole thing apart. Why? Just this part. Because, look, the balls here are facing that way. The balls here are facing this way. How are you going to put them together? Change these to face that way. Take these balls off and turn them all sideways. Hey, does this team get frazzled? No way. Just work together. Okay, we had a problem when we started off with a little lack of strength on the end. We had some sagging in the middle. So what we did, we assigned different teams to uh, remedy the problem. And what they found out was by using these little V-braces on the end, as well as moving the solar panels to the top, it, it reduced the uh, amount of sagging on the ends. So they found out that by using diagonal braces, you can strengthen a straight piece pretty remarkably. And uh, we had our team over here. Thursday, 800 hours, 8 a.m. Trainees head to the launch area. No, not for a shuttle launch, but for the model rocket they've constructed. Each rocket has a crew of one. One cricket astronaut preparing for liftoff. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. With these rockets that they're launching, it's taken them three days to work on. So these guys are really excited today because now is going to be the moment of truth to see if they got it together. Yeah! 
It went perfect. Um, the rocket went straight up, and the parachute opened just the way it should have, and it looks like it's going to land safely. And I hope my cricket's okay. <laughs> it's a laugh. So it's mine. When you travel to space, you're going to a new frontier. We're still finding out things about space. There's a lot of things we still don't know. If I could find the space, I wouldn't have a doubt. I'd take this team with me because they're ready to go. Thursday, 1400 hours. Anticipation and excitement fill the Space Camp Training Center. Here, their week of astronaut training and teamwork will be put to the Space Camp test. Roger, starting roll program. Mission control confirms roll maneuver. Engines running at 65%, velocity 2,400 feet per second. Columbia, Houston, you're looking good. Stand by for booster separation. SRV separating. Velocity now 20,000 feet per second, altitude 59 nautical miles, downrange distance 515 nautical miles. Mythic power and ready to go to work. Roger, Houston, we hear you loud and clear. Columbia, you are looking good for a normal landing. 45. Gear down and lock. Touchdown. 800 hours. Friday, the final morning. Their week-long space camp experience is drawing to a close. Trainees prepare to receive their certificate and wings, making them a part of a very special fraternity. The best mission team goes to Coca-Cola. <laughs> These kids, strangers just a week ago, now have something to share. The excitement of spaceflight, confidence in themselves, and the hope that someday They'll be pioneers in their own right. Attitude is the first obstacle to education reform. America's students must rise to the challenge of higher scholastic achievement. At U.S. Space Camp, we inspire, we encourage, we motivate, and we see results. A survey of past trainees shows that more than 90% report a greater interest in science and technology after attending Space Camp. The clock is running in your classroom, and the countdown to education reform has begun. On behalf of U.S. Space Camp, I hope you have a spectacular liftoff. Keep the dream alive. <laughs>